Hi guys, and welcome to another video today. It's a new year, and I hope you get all the adventures that you want in 2023. So I asked you guys in the comments some ideas for videos and what you'd like to see this year. And I got a few requests about route planning and how I actually plan my days in the Scottish mountains. So I'm gonna go through four different things about how I get from pre-planning right through to the clothing that I'm gonna wear out on the mountains. But I just need to say that this is obviously just my opinion. It's not to be used as a guide and it's just the way that I go about my days in the mountains. So let's get into how I pre-plan my days in the hills. So my pre-planning will probably start four or five days in advance of the walk. And we know that the biggest issue in Scotland is the weather. <laughs> the weather is forever changing. So I'll be checking the forecasts about five days in advance. And the website I use is the Met Office. I find that to be pretty accurate so far. The main things I'll be looking at on the website there is for visibility. I want it to be medium to very good to excellent. And I'll also look at wind speed. So the highest wind speed I'll go out is at Guston, about 40 to 50 miles an hour. Any more than that, and I just find it a bit uncomfortable. I also use a different service to check the weather. I use the MWIS, the Mountain Weather Information Service, I think it is. And between them two websites, I find that it's really accurate. If the weather does hold up, then I'll start my route planning probably the day before, and I'll pick the Monroe that I want to do. There's a few different ways that I do this, so I'll show you that just now. So if the weather does hold up and that forecast doesn't change last minute, then I'll try and find a Monroe. And as I say, there's a couple of different ways I can do this, which I'll show you just now. And the first one is this scratch map. Now, I think I got this off Amazon. I think it was 10 or 15 pounds. But you can see which ones I've not done in the gold. And the ones I have done, they're the ones that I've scratched off. So it's a really handy tool to just get a quick look at ones I still need to do. Another great tool for planning your days on the Monroes in Scotland is the Walk Highland website. This is a fantastic website and it's full of information about the Monroes. This is pretty much the Bible for hill walkers in Scotland. So I'll show you a bit on the website just now. Walk Highlands is a fantastic tool to use which shows you all the Monroes that I've still got to do. As you can see, the red ones are the ones that I have remaining. And I can click on the interactive map and see all the details about the mountain. So for this one I haven't done yet, I can go in and click on the route. It shows me the two Monroes included in this route and also the start point where I'm going to park. You can click on that and it tells you how long it takes to get there. In each route they have the GPX waypoints that you can download to your navigation device which is also very handy. There's also a written description full of pictures and this will help you along your way during the hike. So going back to the interactive map here, it's a great tool to use when planning your days in the mountains. As you can see here, I've made a bit of a mess of things. I've done all the closest Monroes to Inverness and I've got huge groups of Monroes that are about a two to three hour drive away. So this year when I'm planning, I'll probably hit these other groups and spend a bit of time in each of the different areas as you don't want to be making the same drive every single time. It's also worth mentioning that the website is not just for Monroes, but caters to all different types of mountains in Scotland, also long routes and just nice scenic walks. So definitely check it out if you haven't before. Another great feature is you can design and build your own GPX routes through the website. These can then easily be downloaded as a GPX file and downloaded to your devices. So if everything's looking good for the day ahead, the weather's holding up, I've picked my Monroe that I want to do, and the next thing I'll do is get the route together and download the files. So the way that I do this is I go on the Walk Highland website and I download the GPX file, which is the file type recognized by your navigation devices. I download that straight off the website onto OS Maps on my iPhone. Now, I do have two iPhones that I use. I use one for flying my drone and my normal phone, and I'll download it to both of them. And usually between the two phones, I'll have enough battery for probably a couple of days. I will also download the GPX onto my GPS. I've got a cheap Etrex 10. This usually just sits at the bottom of my bag, but it will get me out of a hole 
if both my phones die. As a backup for most routes, I will also take a paper copy of a map and compass. Now, I'm not the best at reading maps. I'd much rather use navigation devices, but if worse comes to worse, then this will get you off the hill. It's worth mentioning as well that a great tool that I use before I go out is actually Google Earth. I'll scan Google Earth and the route ahead just to give me a heads up of how it looks, what sort of terrain I'm going to encounter on the walk, and maybe ways off the mountain if visibility gets really bad. It's a good way to show you which way to go, and you've got it in your head, the shape and size of the mountain. So that's most of my pre-planning stuff for navigation, route planning, and weather. That's probably the three main things. But I will still say that about a quarter of times that I plan to go out, I'll wake up in the morning, I'll do one last check of the forecast and it's changed to bad visibility, fog and as you know probably by watching my videos I'm quite a bit of a fair weather walker so I will bail out maybe about a quarter of times even with all this planning and prep the days beforehand. So anyway let's get on to what clothing and equipment that I'll bring on my days in the Scottish mountains. So the first thing that I'll talk about is footwear. I'm not going to go too in depth. Lexi's going to be my assistant for this, I think. But I'll basically just give you a quick run through of the clothing that I wear on the mountains just now. So in the height of summer and the really dry weather, I've started wearing lightweight trainers. These are the Merrill Gore-Tex. I think they're MQM. Really, really light. And if I know the weather's going to be dry, it's been dry for a sustained amount of time, then I will wear them lightweight Gore-Tex trainers. Now I have got a new pair of boots I'm going to try this year. I've had them out a couple of times already and they're the OEX Crusades. Now I got these gifted from Blacks and I've tried them. I actually climbed Stat Poly with them and they are brilliant. They're really light. They're not winter boots by any means. They're not crampon compatible. But I think through the summer I'm going to start wearing these sort of boots. They're fully waterproof. They've got a Vibram sole, so yeah, I'm going to try them through the summer and see how I get on. Now on to my trusted pair of boots, the La Sportiva Trango Towers. Now I wear these day in, day out most of the time. This is actually my second pair and I do swear by these boots. They're just so comfortable. They really are a great fit for people with narrow feet like myself. Fully waterproof, crampon compatible. And they're great for scrambling too. I might wear these in summer if it's going to be really rocky and I need a bit of a rigid sole. But yeah, I really swear by these boots. Now on to some of the clothing that I wear. So I'll work my way up and I'll start with socks. So in the height of summer, I might just wear these thousand mile socks, which are guaranteed to stop you getting blisters. And I could tell you, ever since I've started wearing them, I've not had a blister yet. They've been true to their word. But most of the year round, I'll just wear Bridgedale midweight socks, merino wool, so I think they wick away the sweat in your feet as well. And yeah, pretty much got three or four pairs of these that I wear all year round. On to trousers, nothing too fancy. My main ones through the year are these Revolution Race GP Pros. And I just like they've got big deep pockets here. They're stretchy fabric up top, which is good for scrambling. Another great feature is they button around your boots here, but also have this nice clip that clips onto your laces and just holds them down and tight. If things start to get a bit more gnarly through the summer, spring, autumn months, then I'll wear these Montane Terras, which I don't wear that often. I prefer these, but I will wear these when conditions are a bit worse. I recently invested in a couple of pairs of trousers for the winter months. The first pair was the Simmon Cascade 2, now, I tried these out in my most recent Monroe and I didn't find them too comfy to be honest. They maybe just don't fit me 100%. Great trousers, but I'm just not sure they're what I was looking for. So I invested in some mountain equipment G2 pants. These are fully Gore-Tex. And I had a day out planned with a guide uh, just last week, but it got cancelled due to bad weather. So I haven't had the chance to try these out yet, but I think they'll be a little bit more durable than the Cascade version. So I'll quickly run through what I wear my top half and underneath I usually just wear a base layer of some sort like this North Face one, something that's going to wick away the sweat on hotter days. I usually run pretty hot anyway so I'll usually wear a base layer, something like this on top, a mid layer jumper jacket. I've got this one from OEX 
and I've also got a Rab equivalent as well. So now on to jackets and I'll start off with my down jacket. It's my trusty Rab Microlite Alpine, I think it's called. I pretty much wear this year round. It's always in my bag for them cold times at the top of the Monroe's, standing chatting to cameras. But yeah, I've had this for a couple of years now. It's really robust as well. I'm surprised how much of a beating it really takes. But this is always going to be part of my bag, a great down jacket. Through the winter, I'll quite often wear that down jacket with a waterproof layer over the top. My waterproof layer of choice is the Mountain Equipment Soltoro jacket. I can't remember, I think it's three and a half layer or two and a half layer Gore-Tex. It's kept me dry all year round pretty much. As I said before, I'm a bit of a fair weather hiker, so I don't actually experience too much rain. But I do have another waterproof jacket that I just don't wear that often. I'm going to try it out a bit more this year. And it's the Revolution Race Cyclone 2.0. It's been a great jacket. I've tried it a couple of times. It's just got a humongous hood on it. I've seen the reviews for that as well, but I think it'll be handy for my sky trip when I'm climbing and I've got a helmet on on top. But it'll be interesting to see how this fares in the Scottish weather. So I thought I'd give a quick mention to some of the winter equipment that I use with my gear. And these are the Gravel G12 crampons. I've had no issues with them. They fit really well in my Trango boots. And yeah, I don't use them that often to be fair. The, the ice axe is a Gravel Monroe SA ice axe, I think it is. It's just a walking ice axe, but it's the right length and height for me. And some extra equipment I use throughout the winter months is the mountain equipment. I think they're the guide gloves. They've been pretty much bomb proof, keep your hands really warm. But yeah, they've came in handy a few times so far. And just hat, gloves, and a buff to wear when it gets really cold. And the last piece of equipment I'll show you is the bag that I'm pretty much using all year round just now. It's the Low Alpine Air Zone 3545. I really like this bag. It's got huge pockets for your hip belt. Uh, it expands from 35 litres to 45, as it tells you in the name. So it's great for camping, walking, pretty much just a great all round bag. I won't go through everything that I pack on my walks. I've got that in a previous video, which I'll put the link in the description for. So that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and you take something from it. It's sometimes interesting just to see other people's gears and the way that they do things. If you've got any questions at all, then just pop them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to answer them straight away. Let me know as well how you go about things, see if you do it differently. And like I said at the start of the video, this is not intended to be a guide. It's just information in my opinion about how I do things in the Scottish mountains. Hopefully next time in the next video, I'll be out on a Scottish Monroe somewhere once this weather improves and we'll get back to business. So thanks for watching today's video and I'll catch you in the next one.